All right, this is the final stretch. Alvin, perfect timing. You two are coming with me. Oh, you're that Riza Maxian reporter. Something I can help you with? Actually... You're writing an article about what I think of Riza Maxia? Does that bother you? It's not that I mind so much as, well, what's in it for me? Huh? He wants a little something-something. Spoken like a true Olympian. Hey, people will be talking about this, right? Why should I play the ugly face of Olympian intolerance for Jack Squat? Pay up or I shut up. Uh... I'm not trying to be a hard ass here. It's just the way of the world. Okay, fine. If we're talking money, that might be a problem for me. But what if I came in here and cleaned? Day in and day out. Huh? I mean, I'll still have to worry about my day job, but I can come clean mornings and nights. And I have customer service experience, too. I could stock shelves or even work the booths. I promise I'll stay out of your way no matter what you have me do. So say yes, will you? Pretty please? Hmm. If it really means that much to you, fine. Go ahead and write whatever you want. Thank you so much! Besides, I wouldn't mind hearing what Riza Maxians think of Olympias. And don't worry about doing any cleaning or nothing. Seems like people do work for free sometimes. Well, I'm not gonna make a habit of it. It's just, this really was starting to make me look like a villain. I'll bring you a draft of the story before it goes to print. Got it. Make it a good one. He even seemed legitimately interested in the perspective of Riza Maxians. Kinda puts a lot of weight on your shoulders, huh? I suppose it does. All right, the finish line's in sight. Luger, I'm staying at your place tonight. I'll work on the article all night if I have to. Come on, that's overdoing it, even for you. I need space to concentrate. I don't even have my own desk at work. It'll be fine. You guys will be there for moral support, right? Come on, please. What do you say? Should we help her see this through? Thanks. Okay, it's coffee time. I will absolutely, positively have this story on my editor's desk first thing in the morning! your room for a while don't doze off in there not gonna happen I think Leia went to turn in her article yeah I'm kind of curious myself let's go she couldn't have gotten far
Hmm. You did all this research? Yes. <laughs> you certainly are tenacious. This'll do. I'll run it. What? Really? Now, tell me what you learned. Well, up until now, I'd always just written my own opinions about things that I thought were interesting. But after doing all the interviews this time, I realized I had been going about this the wrong way. Our job as journalists is to present an objective and accurate perspective, and then let the readers come to their own conclusions. Objectivity and accuracy, those two elements are the key points here. I see. It sounds like you're the type of person who learns by doing. You should keep that in mind from now on. Is Leia a full-fledged journalist now? Hardly. She still lets herself get too close to the story, and she doesn't take into account the impact she has on her readers. Nevertheless, she showed good journalistic instincts with this piece, and she isn't afraid to do legwork. She has potential. Nice work. Seems your editor finally accepted you. You heard that, huh? Thanks, guys. I couldn't have done it without you. I'm not about to let up either, and I hope you'll keep helping me chase down the stories. <laughs> you got it. Luger, from now on, I'm going to pay close attention to the fractured dimensions and everything that takes place within them. And then, I'm going to make sure that I'm able to convey all of that to the rest of the world. That way, their lives will have meaning. scoured the village tomes and oral histories. But unfortunately, no definitive version of that story seems to have survived. Forgive me, Lady Mila. I have failed you. It's okay. Thanks for trying. If anything comes up, let me know. Did you need something? You've taken an interest in me? What? Come on, is that really necessary? But it's true, isn't it? I remember you reacted the same way. Never mind me. Shouldn't you tell Luger what you were talking to that villager about? Ah, good point. I've been pursuing several different leads, but so far none of them has led to reliable information. One thing that does ring true is that the people of Nia Kara are Kresnik's descendants. According to local legend, Nia Kara was settled by Kresnik's descendants. That's why there's a shrine to Maxwell here, and why the people still practice old-fashioned spirit worship. If the fractured dimension Aska was telling the truth about the previous Maxwell, then the schism must have split the ancestors of Kresnik in two. With some in Olympias and some in Rizamaxia. But wouldn't such a major event have been recorded in the texts and oral histories? Good point. It would have been a major historical shift. There must be more to this story. DODA here. We've detected a new fractured dimension. The rift is near Nia Kara. We've sent you the coordinates. Please take care of it. Uh, 
I heard her say near Kara. Is it the next fractured dimension? Maybe they'll know more about Mila Kresnik in the fractured version of Niakara. Jude, you read my mind. Luger, I want to accompany you on this mission. Me too. I have to say, Luger's GHS always seems to ring at the worst times. Hmm? Now that you mention it, it does seem like someone always calls him when we're in the middle of a conversation. Yeah, it happens so often. It's enough to make me wonder if they're doing it on purpose. Hmm. Huh? Oh, we're not blaming you. You're not the one making the calls. Yes. In this case, the fault lies with those making the calls. Usually Vera or Nova. I swear, those two need to learn to take a hint. Okay. Mila? What are you so happy about? Oh, you noticed? That's good, Jude. You can take a hint. She just wanted to try out a new idiom. I see. Let's gather what information we can. The Divergence Catalyst has to be affecting someone. Let's see if we can figure out who. Is that...? <sighs> Look! Ivor's doing weird ivory stuff again! He's so weird! Scram, urchins. You must be the only chump in the world who still believes in the Four Great Spirits! Maxwell and the spirits are just a fairy tale invented by grown-ups, you dummy. Ha! You've proven your own ignorance, fools. Allow me to school you. First of all, this town wouldn't even exist without the efforts of the great spirit channeler Kresnik. Oh boy, here we go. Now he's weird and boring. Let's go. Ipso facto. Hey, get back here! Sorry to interrupt your lesson. Do you know about Kresnik, Ivor? Uh, sir? And who exactly are you? Didn't your mother teach you any manners? We're researchers interested in spirit worship. Would you consider sharing your expertise with us? Please spare no detail. You're researching spirit worship? Correct. In particular, the human named Mila Kresnik. Hmm. How could anyone researching spirit worship not know about Mila Kresnik? But I'm willing to play along, even if you are suspicious. I'll tell you, but just this once. Thanks, I've... I've... I've never felt so grateful. Good. Your gratitude is noted. Now, Mila Kresnik was the first human ever to summon Lord Maxwell. She was a singing handmaid and the first chief of the Kresnik clan. A singing handmaid? Huh. How strange. How dare you! Show some respect! I'm sorry. <laughs> I can't believe I was just scolded by Ivor. Mila Kresnik had a wonderful singing voice. It said she sang with such passion that even Lord Maxwell fell under her spell. So does that mean this village was founded by Mila Kresnik herself? Alas, no. She died young, before Niakara was built. The village was founded by a member of her clan. I see. You've been very helpful. Of course I have. Don't you know who I am? I am Ivor, Mila Kresnik's successor as handmaid to Lord Maxwell. Preserving and propagating the lore of Lord Maxwell is a handmaid's sworn duty. I must ensure the lore is kept without error forevermore, even if the heavens be split or the earth torn asunder. Right. Thank you. Ivor! It's back! Come quick! The Terror of the Hollowmont? That thing just won't quit! It gets worse. Apparently, two village kids were seen heading up the Hollowmont. What? Anyway, you gotta get over there. I'll be right behind you. The Terror of the Hollowmont? I've never heard of such a thing. Perhaps it's our divergence catalyst. Then we're going to...
No need to cry. I will save you. 
Trust me, as handmaid to Lord Maxwell, it is my duty to protect you. You fools! Why would you come here? Look out! Uh. Aren't those the four great spirits? Well done. We'll take it from here, Ivor. Ready? No breaks, the divergence catalyst. Let's end this. Got him. <laughs> 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 Save them. But... <laughs> I've grown stronger still. I'm getting stronger. Guess who just got stronger? Wait, hold on. Is it... is it really you? I'm sorry. I did not mean to deceive you. It is! Lord Maxwell! Forgive my insolence, my lord! Please, allow me to serve at your side from now on! I beg of you! No. I'm sorry, but we won't meet again. I'm fine. I knew that was coming. Don't worry about me. No point in you getting depressed over it. Anyway, it's obvious that something soured the relationship between Mila Kresnik and my predecessor. I just wish we could ask the previous Maxwell directly, but I suppose that's easier said than done. Humans say they never appreciate their parents until they're gone. I'm beginning to see their point. I'm not so sure that applies here. This is the sort of place that puts one's mind at ease. Try giving them all presents, but what would they even like? Hmm. <laughs> hmm? <laughs> I'm trying to think of a present to give to Mila's dear friends. They mean so much to her. I'm her big sister, after all. I have so many responsibilities. <coughs> hmm? You 
intend to give presents to Mila's friends? Of course. It's a big sister's job to look out for her younger sibling. What would make a good present? Handmade. Then it would have a personal touch. Niakara is known for its traditional handmade ornaments. Those who give them are greatly admired for their taste, and the recipients are always grateful. How can I get a hold of them? They're fashioned from harpy feathers, apparently. Harpies? Where can I find those? They're said to inhabit Burmia Gorge. DODA here. We've detected a new fractured dimension. The rift is near Burmia Gorge. We've sent you the coordinates. Please take care of it. We can get harpy feathers in the fractured version of Burmia Gorge. That'll be okay, won't it? I don't mind keeping an eye out for harpies, but remember that our main objective is the Divergence Catalyst. You think I don't know that? <laughs> hey Gaius, what's your favorite color? My favorite color? Why would you ask that? If I'm making accessories for everyone, it would be so cute if everyone got a different color! Hmm. Just curious, really. Humans have such a different sense of aesthetics than we spirits do. Is that right? I do not have a preference. I'll use whatever color is most functional in a given situation. Oh, you don't say. Gosh, thanks for the help! I asked the simplest possible question and you can't even throw me a bone! <laughs> but let's say someone was going to give you a present. What color would you want it to be? I see little value in being particular about such things. Perhaps Luger could be of more use to you in aesthetic matters. Huh? Hmm. Even you demand that I persist with this? All right then, I suppose blue is a fine color. Blue? Well, that's a surprise. It hasn't always been a favorite, but since I now associate it with you, Muse, I have come to view it more... fondly. Huh. Oh, really? Oh, wow! I had no idea Gaius had such a soft side! Mm. Don't look at me like that. That's the most lip service I can muster. Just be happy I didn't make her upset.
This is quite fortuitous. <laughs> That's a nice big one. Hurry up and kill it so we can pluck it. I'm so happy I beat a harpy. <laughs> I must become stronger. I love getting stronger. I've grown stronger still. Retrieve the feathers before Luger destroys the Divergence Catalyst. Sorry, I'm going to need a few of these. Blah, this is so disgusting. This should be a man's job. Why don't they offer to help? Blah, I'm gonna be sick. That should do it. Your turn. Going to take these feathers ahead to Nia Kara. Come meet me there after a while, okay? Muse picked this place for our rendezvous, yet I don't see Mila anywhere. Is it possible she only invited us? Ah, here she is. What do you want from us? I got these as a gift, more than I'll ever need. So I thought, why not share? What are they? Ugh, they're so creepy! Are they made of harpy feathers or something? What are you trying to push on us? Ghastly objects indeed. Perhaps they're cursed. She's trying to curse us?! These are traditional native ornaments. They're actually quite precious. Really? Are you serious, guys? You can't be for real. <clears throat> How sad. No one seems to like them. Well, they're, um, certainly different. I'll take one. If you say so, take any you like. Tears. There's always next time. That's a nice breeze. I could stand here all day.
Some people are headed our way. I wonder what for. Agent Luger, right? And you are? Must you ogle me so? You're making me blush. Muse, I'm a spirit. Is that a problem? No, I didn't mean... I apologize. We received an urgent mission from HQ, directing us to exterminate monsters in the Felgana mine. I sent out an APB for all agents in the Laronde area. These two agreed to join you. I'm Lisa. It's an honor to meet you, sir. I promise I won't get in your way. A men, pleasure. Wait, isn't that... No way. It can't be. <laughs> this mission will be a binational operation. I wish you the best of luck. A binational operation? How interesting. Perhaps I'll tag along and lend a hand. Since when did you become such a do-gooder? You've been spending too much time with you-know-who. So we've got agents from two quarreling nations working together. Maybe this will teach me the secret to getting closer to Mila's friends. <laughs> this sounds like fun. Mind if I come along? I don't see the monsters we're looking for anywhere. Perhaps they're deeper inside. Everything okay? Hmm? Hello? Oh, my apologies. I couldn't help but stare. I've never met a spirit before. You're so... so beautiful. Enough chatter. Monsters won't wait for you to finish your conversation. I got scolded again. You're from Rizamaxia. Why are you working with Spirius Corporation? I wanted to try cooperating with people from Olympias. You don't mind the Olympians? They seem to be pushing you pretty hard. They're doing it for my own good. I'm not living up to my full potential. You're so adorable! Don't let anyone try to hold you back! Are you stupid? <laughs> Lisa! Y yes ma'am? Now I remember why I hate Riza Maxians. I wonder if those two will ever get along. A binational military force. What an interesting idea. Indeed. It is an obvious idea, but actually putting it into operation reveals numerous obstacles. It's a testament to the Spurious Corporation that they were able to iron out those obstacles so quickly. Yes, it certainly is. Gaius has such long eyelashes. They're like the eyelashes of a horse! <coughs> hmm? If this sort of experiment becomes commonplace, it would give me more hope that humans and spirits will be able to coexist peacefully in the future. Yes, indeed. In that sense, I have high hopes for you. What do you think, Luger? <laughs> so we're all agreed then. That makes me think. How come it's 
considered a compliment to comment on the length of someone's eyelashes. And yet, you're not supposed to mention their nose here at all. <coughs> Luger? Gaius, is something wrong? No. Hmm? Beard hair is fine too, just like eyelashes. Only nose hair is forbidden. It makes no sense! I just don't get human aesthetics at all! Looks like we're getting close. Let's hurry up and butcher those things, and then we can head home. There they are! Lisa and I will take the monsters on this side. You handle the rest. Don't bite off more than you can chew. We'll be fine. Please, just take care of the rest. Incredible! I'm going in! Affirmative. I've got your back. We can handle this. Hang in there. Let's show them what we're made of. Let's leave it at that. <laughs> I think I got it! Mission accomplished. Those monsters won't cause any trouble for a while now. Excellent work. And thanks. You might be a bit of a ditz, but I'm sure glad you're on my side. I underestimated you. Thank you. You were amazing back there. So, do you two like each other or hate each other or what? You know, I'm not really sure myself anymore. <laughs> Politically, we have some things to work out. But personally, I guess she's not so bad. Yeah, if you and I can be friends, then someday everyone can. <laughs> Let's not get carried away. Farewell, Ms. Muse. Bye-bye! Having a common enemy brought those two closer together. It's like a year ago, all over again, when Gaius and Jude's group was fighting for the same goal. Of course, I was deceiving all of them, so I can't really say that I fought beside them. <laughs> This just gave me a great idea. <laughs> <laughs>